Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to more books with B. Sharice. I'm your host, B. Sharice Moore. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm seeing that I'm getting a lot more subscribers and that makes me really happy. I ho I'm hoping that I'm making a difference in the books that you choose for your children, um, the way you're thinking about introducing books to your children, and hopefully you're introducing books to them that you never heard of before. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend, a wonderful break, and um, I'm just going to jump right on into it, okay? So um, this week, I decided to do an oldie but goodie, all right? I call this an oldie but goodie because I haven't taught this book in about, oh my gosh, 2009 maybe? Yeah, so about 10 years. So it's been about 10 years since I taught this book. And the book is Double Dutch by Sharon M. Draper. Again, that's Double Dutch by Sharon M. Draper. So um, a quick story uh, about Double Dutch. I happened to be talking to my cousin and, about the story and telling her, yeah, you know, it takes place in Cincinnati because my cousin is from Cincinnati. And she says, oh, really? And I said, yes, by Sharon Draper. And she says, what? That was my fifth grade teacher. So ironic, you know, she's really saying uh, Miss Draper's praises as to how wonderful of a teacher she was. So it's great that I had the opportunity then to teach this book. So again, the book is Double Dutch by Sharon M. Draper. So Double Dutch, I would say, is appropriate for middle school. All right. So I would say um, grade six to eight. All right, you can even push it back to fifth, fifth grade. Fifth grade will work fine too. But a little bit about Double Dutch. Double Dutch is about a young girl named Delia. Delia's in seventh grade. Uh, she's a regular, you know, young lady and pretty much, you know, does regular things. And she loves to jump rope. She loves Double Dutch. That's what she does. That's who she is. That's what defines her. All right, she loves Double Dutch. However, Delia has a secret, and you find it out pretty early in the book, so I don't believe that I'm, like, you know, spoiling anything for you, because I try not to have a lot of spoilers in my videos, you know, but um, she cannot read, all right? But in order for her to sustain and make the team and, of course, remain on the team, she has to be able to pass these tests, these state tests that are coming up. And of course, she has to maintain her grades. So she's really living with this, this terrible secret of not being able to read. But um, she's basically been faking her way through all this time. Okay. Um, in the meantime, she has one of her best friends, Randy, who is also uh, dealing with a secret and Randy is actually alone, right? His father is a truck driver and he hasn't seen his father for some time, but he's scared to reveal this to the other adults in his life because of course he doesn't want to get his father in trouble, all right? So we have Randy and we have Delia and they are really trying their best to keep these secrets from friends, family, and the adults in their lives, okay? Now, the antagonists in the book are the Tolliver twins, and the Tolliver twins are two boys who basically terrorize the school, all right? And um, it's interesting, you know, as the story progresses, you find out a little bit more about the Tolliver twins and the motives for their actions. So um, I really enjoyed Double Dutch, and I enjoyed teaching it because there's so many of our students who are struggling readers, so many of them that are reluctant readers. And it's my belief that a lot of our reluctant readers are also struggling readers. Sometimes those are, you know, one and the same. And I think that that's one of the reasons why this book really resonated with the students when I taught it. So um, again, it's called Double Dutch, Sharon M. Draper. And um, it's Really, really great for your struggling readers, for your reluctant readers, just because of the connections that I think they can make with the characters. These are young people who are dealing with things like bullying, 
uh, you know, it's a coming of age tale, you know, there's some sports in there, you know, um, double dutch obviously is an athletic activity and I really remember double dutch being big when I was a child. It was something that was, you know, a big deal. I was always terrible. I could kind of turn the jump in. Yeah, right. That's not what I did. But I really enjoyed watching it. And um, many of the girls in my neighborhood, that was what they did. They double dutched. So this is something that I think some of our students can definitely connect with. Um, for background information, what I did was I actually showed my students some double dutch tournaments, you know, to get them um, uh, acclimated with what double dutch was, you know. It's so funny, like, I don't feel like I'm all that old, yet some of the pastimes that I remember that were so big when I was a child just really aren't anymore. So it could be fun to expose your, you know, your children and your students to Double Dutch if you have the opportunity to teach this book, okay? So uh, just talking to them about that. And then, of course, talking to them about literacy, you know, and perhaps this is a book that can allow students to open up to you and say, you know what, I'm struggling to read you know, and um, I would like some extra help, you know, uh, because a lot of our students fall through the cracks. Sometimes testing doesn't always reveal everything, you know, and you'd be really surprised as to what our students are unable to do and have kind of, you know, tricked the system, to be quite honest, for many years. All right. So I also did some various, actually, I did maybe five or six activities for this book for my graduate school assignment. So I had to create a matrix of activities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share those activities with you. It'll be in the um, description section underneath the video where I share everything. And um, I think that they're all pretty enriching activities that you can do with your students and your children you know, after you complete the book. So I know the first activity was actually a uh, bodily kinesthetic activity, meaning it, it deals with movement and drama. And this particular activity asks students to recreate a scene in the book. Then there's another activity that I have designed and it asks students to research the criminal justice system. Um, at the end of the book, the antagonists, excuse me, have a legal issue. And I wanted the students to research the criminal justice system and think about whether or not those particular students uh, would have had, or characters, I should say, would have been able to receive a fair trial in this day and age. And once they do their research, then they would present a monologue based on their findings as to whether or not these, these students, these, uh, excuse me, these characters received, you know, would receive, excuse me, a, um, a fair trial. And uh, the final activity is science related. So students would use Google Maps in order to research tornadoes. Um, there is a scene later on in the book where the city is pretty much ransacked by a tornado and um, actually by rare dual tornadoes. And so without giving too much away, um, it might be great to have students just research tornadoes, uh, research how tornadoes form, uh, research, you know, warning signs and, and where to, to hide and, and, and how to prepare for those types of storms. And they would use either sway. I, I, I'm going to I had Prezi down as something that they could also use, but I'm pretty sure that Prezi is something that you have to purchase. But Microsoft Sway is free and it's in its web based. So um, they can create a, a Sway, Microsoft Sway um, multimedia presentation based on their findings. OK, so I'm going to link you to those activities that I've previously designed in the description section and um, check out Double Dutch. Sharon M. Draper, all right, appropriate for grades six through eight, even I would say five through eight. And um, as usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, like, comment, share, subscribe, like, comment, share, subscribe. And um, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for listening to me today. And I hope what I've said 
is of some substance and of some help to bring in and foster new readers and to, you know, give those those of you who have voracious readers at home, give you more material that you can share with them. Okay. So again, thank you so much for tuning in for, uh, with more books uh, with B. Sharice, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.